Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focus Neurology. Today we are going to talk about two interesting phenomena. One, the beaver's sign in paraplegia. Second, the breathing pattern in quadriplegia. So the, the beaver's sign in paraplegia. What is the beaver's sign? But before we understand the beaver's sign, we need to know few concepts. The rectus abdominis muscle, the rectus abdominis muscle which is in the center of the abdomen flexes the vertebral column and compresses the abdominal viscera in acts such as defecation or partition which requires forced expiration. So the rectus abdominis muscle is very important in acts of forced expiration like partition or defecation. So what happens to rectus abdominis when we try to sit up? When we try to sit up by flexing the neck or coming from the supine to the recumbent position without using the arms, the abdominal muscles strongly contract when raising the heads and shoulders against resistance in the initial part but the later part the hip flexors contract so how do we perform the test when we ask the person to sit up or flex the neck or sit from the supine to the sitting position without using hands the rectus abdominis muscles contracts But if the abdominal muscles contract equally in the all four quadrants, the umbilicus will not move. Umbilicus is supplied by T10. But if there is a lesion at T10 or below, when a person tries to sit without using the arms or flexes the neck against resistance, the abdominal muscles contract. But if there is a lesion below T10, the lower abdominal muscles cannot contract and the upper abdominal muscles will contract and pulls the umbilicus cephaloid towards the head. So when a person sees the movement of the umbilicus upwards, it indicates that there is a lesion is at T10 or below. This is Beaver's sign, very useful in persons suffering from paraplegia. The advantage of the Beaver's sign is that it is a motor sign. So clinicians therefore can easily localize the paraplegic lesion without sensory findings because sensory findings are subjective. It may vary but motor findings are objective. So if we ask the person to sit from the supine position of the flex against flex the neck against resistance and if we see the umbilicus moving upwards, that means there is a lesion at T10 or below. This is Beaver's sign. Obviously, the etiology will be a spinal cord lesion, either injury or tumors at the level of T10 or below. So, very useful sign, a motor sign. So, there is no sensory, subjective sensory findings involved. So very easy to lo localize. So this is Beaver's sign which we use it in paraplegia. The second important component I am going to talk about is the breathing pattern in quadriplegia. When the cervical roots get affected, what happens? Generally when there is a deep inspiration, there are two components. One, the intercostal muscles which pulls the thorax in the anterior posterior direction and in the transverse direction. The second is the diaphragm which descends down and increases the, the vertical diameter. So for respiration, for inspiration to occur, two groups of muscles are one the intercostal muscles 
and second the diaphragm when the intercostal muscles act in breathing we call that as thoracic type of breathing when the diaphragm acts predominantly in the breathing we call that as an abdominal type of breathing so any pathology which affects the diaphragm or the surrounding structures like ascites the person changes over from the diaphragm to the intercostal muscles so from the abdominal type of breathing it becomes a predominantly thoracic type of breathing likewise any pathology in intercostal muscles or surrounding structures like pleurisy which gives pain person changes from the thoracic to the abdominal type of breathing and start using diaphragm women tend to use intercostal muscles predominantly and therefore we call that as a thoracic type of breathing so for women it's a predominantly thoracic type of breathing men use diaphragm predominantly and therefore for men it is predominantly an abdominal type of breathing the diaphragm is supplied by c3 c4 c5 roots and therefore if c3 c5 for c3 c4 c5 roots are affected the diaphragm cannot move well and therefore person switches over the pattern of breathing from the abdominal to the thoracic type of breathing so in a person with quadriplegia especially when the c3 c4 c5 roots are involved and diaphragm gets affected the pattern of breathing changes from the abdominal type of breathing to thoracic type of breathing and therefore thoracic type of breathing is highly suggestive of a cervical root lesion affecting the diaphragm so very interesting and exciting phenomenon weaver sign which we use in paraplegia and the pattern of breathing which we use to localize the quadriplegia so weaver sign is the movement of the umbilicus upwards when the lower abdominal muscles that is t10 and below are affected we call that weaver sign so it localizes the lesion to t10 and below it is purely a motor sign so there is no subjective sensory phenomenon involved so it is a very objective way of localizing the lesion likewise in quadriplegia when the diaphragm gets affected person cannot use diaphragm for breathing and therefore the breathing pattern changes from the abdominal to thoracic type of breathing where they use intercostal muscles so with these two phenomena we can localize lesions in paraplegia and quadriplegia so quadriplegia and paraplegia localization becomes easy with the beaver sign in paraplegia and breathing pattern in quadriplegia i hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture if you have any suggestions or comments kindly post on to my youtube channel please like and subscribe my youtube channel dr sinwas medical concepts and my fb page dr sinwas concepts thank you bye